Good afternoon, TD, or good evening, whenever you happen to be watching this. Our topic today is maximum or minimum problems, and our goal, I can set up equations and complete the square for maximum and minimum problems. Um, so we're going to look at some more applications of parabola, and notice that I have a nice blueprint here. It says that whenever you have a maximum, whenever a question asks for maximum or minimum values, your equation must be in completed square form. Absolutely must be in completed square form for maximum and minimum problems. So, our first example <coughs> is a product problem where this is more of a, a math puzzle than something that's actually useful to do, but it says, find two numbers whose difference is 8 and whose product is minimum. So, there's a couple of uh, keywords here, a difference of 8 and a product that is minimum. As soon as I see that minimum, I know I'm going to have to complete the square. I have to have it in completed square form or I won't get an answer. So um, let's t make a couple let statements. Let one number... bx and let the other be well if it's a difference of 8 I've got two options I can say it's x plus 8 or I can say it's x minus 8 that's two ways to find numbers that have a difference of that it's either 8 higher or 8 lower than the number you're talking about if it has a difference of 8 let's leave it as x minus 8 and now it says its product is minimum. So I need an equation for the product. And once I have an equation for the product, then I'm going to uh, complete the square so that I can figure out what the maximum product is. Okay. So the equation for the product will be x times x minus 8. And I need to expand it out before I complete the square. So I get x squared minus 8x. And now I'm going to go through the process of completing the square. Brackets around the first two terms. There's only two terms here. Jump down a couple of lines. So we have x. And I know this is going to be minus 4 because I have to take half of that when I go down there. So you take half of it. And now to get what's missing up here, I have to square this. So that's plus 16. And then we have to subtract 16. And now I need the step where I pull this bracket in. I don't want that bracket there. I would like it there because this thing here is the same as this squared bracket down here. However, I can't just pull it in like that. I have to uh, take it out of the bracket. And in this case, I can actually just pull it out of the bracket and get minus 16. If there was some number out in front of here, I'd have to multiply it in. But it's not there, so I can just um, pull it out. And, of course, the minus 16 goes down in the bottom. So what does this tell me? Uh, this tells me that the vertex of this parabola is for six, negative 16. So it tells me that the minimum product, the minimum product is negative 16 when x is this other one, 4. Now, if x is 4, then the other one is going to be 4 minus x, which is negative 4. So, the, therefore, the two numbers are 4 and negative 4. So, those are the two numbers that give us the minimum product. Now, a perimeter problem. A fence is enclosed by 400 meters of fencing. What dimension should the enclosed space have to maximize the area? So I know I'm going to need an equation for area because that's what I'm maximizing. It says maximize the area, which means that area needs an equation for it. Luckily, I know how to get the equation of an area by using the length and the width of the rectangle. I just have to have an, e an expression for length and width. So let... The length B 
be L. Well, if I let the length be L, I know that I have going all the way around this rectangle is 400 meters, which means that going halfway around the rectangle is 200 meters. So L plus W has to equal 200 meters. So therefore, W equals 200 minus L. That M was just meters. We don't really need it there. So then we're going to let the width be 200 minus L. Now, area equals length times width. And in this case, our length is L, and our width is 200 minus L. So now we need to expand and complete the square. So this is going to give us 200L minus L squared. And that's not usually the way we see it. We usually see the L squared first, so I'm going to rearrange it. Negative L squared plus 200L. We can just rearrange it as long as we leave the same signs in front of it. So now I'm going to put brackets around the first two terms and divide out the coefficient of L squared, which in this case is just 1. So I'm going to take that negative 1 out, and I get L squared minus, remember, got to get it out of both of them, 200L. And there's nothing to put on the end there. So now I'm going to jump down a couple of steps. That minus out there. L squared, oops, not L squared, just L. This bracket, if, it's, if this is going to be the middle term of this squared bracket, that means that uh, I'm missing a minus 100. And then I have to square this to get what's missing out of here, which is going to be uh, plus 10,000. And of course, I have to subtract 10,000 again. Now I have to pull that 10,000 out of the bracket, but that negative outside is going to have an effect on it. What it's going to do is turn that negative 10,000 into a positive 10,000 when I pull it out of the brackets. Remember, this is at like a negative 1, and I have to multiply by that to get it out of the bracket. So it's going to be negative 1 times negative 10,000 is positive 10,000. And then I need positive 10,000 down here. So what does this tell me? This tells me that the vertex of the parabola is at 100 comma 10,000. And we know that uh, the first value here, um, our variable is length, and then this is area. So this is length versus area, so this tells me the maximum area occurs when the length is 100 meters. Uh, now, if the length is 100 meters, let's look back up at this thing here. If the length is 100 meters, then the width is 200 minus 100, which is just 100. So this is best if it's a square. So we can say, and the width. is 100 meters. Now let's make sure we've answered the question. The question said, what dimensions? So it needs to be 100 by 100. It didn't ask us what the um, largest area was, but we could answer that. This is the maximum area right here. It's 10,000 and it will be in square meters. Now our last question is a revenue problem. Uh, it says a farmer grows rutabagas in an 8 hectare field. If he harvests the crop now, he'll get three tons of rutabagas per hectare that he can sell for $200 per ton. Each week he waits, his yield will increase by 0.3 tons per hectare, but the price that he gets will drop by $10 per ton. So we've got a couple different things going on here, and we want to maximize the revenue. So notice that we've got and this eight hectare field. 
doesn't really matter because the same thing's going to happen in every hectare. So we're going to just do this for one hectare. And so we've got two things going on. We've got yield, which is three tons, and then we're told that the yield will increase by three tons. So we've got yield going on here. And we've got price. So here's price. And here's the change in the price, the rate of change in the price. So those things are going to go together and give us to help us set up an equation. So let's think for a moment. What is his current revenue per hectare? Well, right now, he's got three tons per hectare. If he harvests now, so he's got three tons per hectare. And each of those tons sell for $200 a ton. So three times 200 is $600. That's going to be his revenue if he harvests now. So how do we get that in English? We took revenue. We took his yield. That's the word for how much he's, his field is giving him. That's the yield. And we multiplied that by the uh, price. And so revenue is actually yield times price. So the two numbers give us revenue um, that give us revenue are changing. The yield changes, and we have this change in yield, and the price changes, and we have this change in price. So now we need to come up with equations for those things. So if I have a yield, right now it's starting at 3 tons. But if we leave it, it's going to go up, which we represent in math as a plus. And it's going to go up by... 0.3, the other thing that I changed in green. Right now our yield is the things that I circled in green. Um, but we don't know how many times it's going to go up by 0.3 because we don't know how many weeks he's waiting. So I'm going to use a W because it's going to go up 0.3 every week. So if he waits one week, we just go up 0.3. If he waits two weeks, he's going to go up 0.6 because I have to multiply it by 2. Etc. Etc. et cetera. Now, price, price right now is starting at $200 for one ton, okay? But um, it's going to drop. In mathematics, we say drop with a negative sign or a minus sign. And it's going to drop by $10 per ton uh, every week. So he's going to drop $10 per ton every week. So now here's our two things, and we know that revenue equals those two things multiplied together. So revenue equals 3 plus 0.3w and 200 minus 10w. Now, what we're going to get here when we expand and simplify, um, I'm going to expand and simplify this very quickly. Ta-da! There, it's expanded and simplified, and it's put into the order that we usually see it. Uh, now I'm going to complete the square. So when I complete the square, I'm going to put brackets around the first two terms, and I'm going to pull out that negative 3. In the brackets, I have n squared minus 10n. So I'm dividing out the minus, that changes that. I'm going to leave a space here, and that plus 600 is going to hang around on the end. Jump down a couple steps. Well, I know if this thing came from a squared bracket, that what the squared bracket it came from is going to be n minus 5. And now I'm going to square this minus 5 to get plus 25 up here, and now I've got this thing here that is the same as this bracket expanded. But I have to set things right again. I can't just stick plus 25 in there. I've changed it, so I have to subtract 25. Now, this, these things here are what I want in the bracket because that's the same as the expansion of this. So I'm going to pull this in here to get that negative 25 outside of the bracket. But in order to do that, I have to multiply by the negative 3. So I get negative 3, n squared minus 10n, 
plus 25. And now when it comes out, it's going to be plus 75. So I'm adding $75 worth of revenue if I wait for a while. So this is going to be plus 675. So what does this tell me? Well, this tells me the maximum revenue, 675 max rev. But that's only if we wait five weeks. This parabola has a vertex at 5, 675, which means that the maximum revenue is $675 if we wait for five weeks. So what does this ask us? It said, when should we harvest in order to get a maximum revenue? So the maximum revenue will be $675 in five weeks. The max rev is $675 if we harvest in five weeks' time. Now, that's actually per hectare. Uh, he has eight hectares, so he's going to get eight times that. And that is it for today.